Hello and welcome to the second part of Introduction to Rocket Science. In today's video, if you might not have guessed, is we're doing the equations of motion, which are, we need to, which is relating distance, velocity, and acceleration together. At the end of this video, I will show a practical example using Kerbal Space Program to find all three of these. Very simple. Good. Now I'll show the first equation which is very straightforward and which is r equals v t now this literally means the distance travel is equal to your velocity times time a nice little example of this is if we're traveling at 30 meters per second and we travel for 4 seconds we'll have, a tra we'll have traveled 100 and 20 meters. Very simple. It's very straightforward because you mostly do it when you're driving a car, you may be going, traveling at 40 miles per hour, you travel for two mile, two hours, sorry, um, you've traveled 80 miles. Yeah? There you go. The second equation can be, I'm going to write it slightly differently before how you're supposed to write it is, if you're trying to find acceleration, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, isn't it? So the way to think of rate of change is a velocity is to think of two different types of two types of points on a journey velocity. So you may have your final velocity, and the change of it is what you had initially, which is your initial velocity. Now we said it was the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So we divide it by how long it took you to do that, and this will give us our acceleration. Now this is our average acceleration because it could our, our velocity may not be uniform but we just guessing it is and that's our average acceleration. It is more common to denote it as Vf which means final velocity minus plus equals Vi which is your initial velocity plus At. This is a very nice way of putting it. Now, the next equation can be derived directly from the second one, but this requires some integration. Now, I'm not going to explain how to do integration if this is a, not a maths tutorial, this is a rocket science physics tutorial. So if you want to learn about more about calculus and differentiation, integration, all that lot, please check Khan Academy out or um, other YouTube videos or Wolfram Alpha for little tips if you just need a calculator and try that out. So what I'm going to do to both sides of this equation is integrate with respect to time. So I'm going to integrate this Vf with respect to time and integrate this in other tire side Vi plus At or with respect to time. Now, another way of writing my velocity is as a function of distance. So I'm just going to rub this bit out. Uh, just get a bit of that's a better eraser, and rub this as a function of distance, which is dr by dt. Now you may have noticed that I can cancel out the t's, the dt's, can't I? So now I'm just integrating with respect to dr, one by respect to the r. So this be just becomes r. Very simple. Now on this side, when I integrate with respect to dt, this becomes v i t, because it's just a constant that is. And then on this side I get 80 squared divided by the power, so a half 80 squared. Now this is a very useful one. So this may you may not know your final velocity, however you do know the distance you've travelled and you do know what your acceleration is. So an example of this is, let's say uh, you've got initial velocity of 2 meters per second, so that's Vi. Um, you've got an acceleration of 3 meters per second and you've got, you trap on the time you've done it all in is only two seconds. So if we do all the maths and just input this in, we got two times two plus a half times three times two squared. 
and this equals 4 add 6 so this is 10 meters very simple and that's if we don't know our final velocity but using this equation we could figure out our final velocity if we wanted to very simple because we don't you can just use the equation above now the th fourth and final equation of motion is derived by putting using oops let's go a bit down again uh, let's go there by putting this equation here into this one now I'm not going to write it out because it will take too much time but just trust me on this the equation is your final velocity squared is equal to your initial velocity squared plus 2ar so this is very helpful for instance if you don't have the time taken but you know the distance you've traveled you, you know your acceleration and you know your two velocities then this is it or you know one of the velocities something like that then this is a very useful equation because you don't need time this one you don't need accelerate this so this first one I'm just going to put all more on green to say this is an equation that one you don't need acceleration this one you don't need your distance this one you don't need your final velocity and this one you don't need your time so there are they are the four equations of motion and it's very useful to remember these but if you can derive them like I've just shown you it's much it's very helpful as well but the way I learned them was just to memorize them and some people may call these the SUVA equations because they use different letters for different things like S is for distance U is for initial velocity and everything but I use these letters because it makes more sense and it make, it's not confusing now let's go to Kerbal Space Program to see this in action now we're in Kerbal Space Program um, there are a few things I have to say before this because many people will be all over oh have you not told me about this but the first thing is um, I'm assuming that acceleration due to gravity is constant um, I'm, air resistance is negligible and my mass doesn't change now in, in real life as the higher you get the acceleration due to gravity becomes less um, air resistance isn't negligible in real life uh, because you've got air resistances and all the forces acting on it but my mass doesn't change in this case because I've slightly cheated I've put infinite fuel on so in real life you're f when you use fuel up you, you lose mass but in this I'm not losing any mass so it's going to be a uniform acceleration so we before we start we need to say our initial height is 72 meters and our initial velocity is 0 meters so using these we can figure out what our acceleration is when we just click launch which is now go and it launches yep launch is it going to launch now now and we'll click stop at about seven seconds now as oh, and now as you can see it's around about 992 meters and that's, a, that's, a, that's an approximation and my and my velocity is 178.7 meters per second so using this I can calculate my acceleration so I found my altitude which is 992 minus my initial which is 72 this gives me my distance which is R okay my initial velocity was zero and now my final velocity is 178.7 meters per second now using this I can calculate my acceleration now which of the four equations do you think it would be yes it's the fourth one if you didn't guess so that means I need to, to 
the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times the distance. Just need to rearrange that just to get acceleration on its own. So if we do that, we get this. So it's v final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared over 2r, which equals our acceleration. And it should, and I'll say should, work out to be 17.36 meters per second squared. See, and using this we can calculate how, mu how much more further it will go up in a certain amount of time. And this is very useful for if you want to know how high your rocket will ever go. Um, so stay tuned for the next video where I will be talking about Newton's laws of motion. See you then. Goodbye.